Hello, I'm Victor Armoli, Dean of the School of Design at SCAD. Um, they're loading the presentation, and I would like to show you a picture of a SCAD. Um, no, I'm sorry, Savannah. No, SCAD. Um, my point is, we have created an incredible symbiotic relationship between the city and the university. There is no way that you can distinguish today one from the other. There is no way that you can take a picture where one is not part of the other. Let me, the difficulty with technology education. I thought, there. Let me tell you a little bit of the story. Um, 1978, Savannah, higher per capita crime in the United States, a city that was being abandoned on, the for, on, on time, and four visionaries that wanted to build the best art university in the United States. And they started on a building that was an icon of war and destruction. It was an armory. Today is an icon of the future and the development of great things. Um, today we are the most comprehensive art and design university in the United States. Um, let me start talking a little bit about Savannah. In Savannah, we have restored and reutilized 58 buildings, only two new constructions, and we did that for dorms because we already used all the red roof things and the motels in town. Um, we believe in dorms, and you can see a little bit of the numbers there, because you can control the resources and you can create community. Uh, we have a methodology of adapting the buildings and it's part of our culture. Um, it's about efficiency, it's about optimizing use, but essentially it's about creating an innovative environment for students to inspire to be creative and prepare a better future for all of us. Um, stories are an incredible important thing for us. Um, stories is what make us humans. And what we try to do is to preserve the ghost in our infra infrastructure, and not only re refer to ghosts as those spiritual things, but those great stories of the people that have made those buildings meaningful. Um, in this case, um, this home was for the or originally created for non-convent. Then it became a halfway house for uh, female prisoners. Then it became our fibers department, the picture in the middle. And then last year, we readapted it again to what is now the only historic preservation dedicated building in the United States. Um, great stories to tell. Clarence Thomas went to elementary school there and it was great to have him there, actually telling his fears and all the stories around the nuns when he was there. Um, the point of this is the restoration that we do is alive. When new technologies get developed, when new frameworks are developed, we adapt the building. And you can see between the two pictures, it's the same lobby and the transition between five years. The next building that I want to refer in Savannah is Iceberg Hall, which is used to be the headquarters of the train system in Georgia. Um, we readapted it in 1991 when we took over and became the home of architecture and interior design. Several programs were born there, like furniture industrial design. And in 2008, due to the new developments in technology and science, we decided to upgrade the building again to make it more efficient and more green. We improved the lighting, we improved the materials, the installations, sound for acoustics uh, improvement, and we included recycling programs. Arnold Hall, Arnold Hall, we won um, a bunch of awards that are listed, and I'm not gonna go for, for, for the list due to time, but we got a LEED Gold certification. It was our first LEED certified building, and um, it became one of the centers for us in order to experiment and revi revi revitalize not only the building, but the surrounding areas. And when we got into a property, what we have done is also support the community around and advise them on how to do it. And that was a great example of how we got not only our building, but the community around Thomas Square improved to get more sustainable. Um, is it only about the buildings? No. And what it is, it's about a comprehensive, and the next slide is gonna be even more text. But the point is for you guys not to read the text, but to see that it's a cultural behavior is to see that all these small things accumulates into a greater picture. Um, in this, I want to make the example that last year, we decided to put GPS and we had an app for the iPhone to track our bus system. We have tried for a decade to improve the use of our bus system by our students. We tried from giving them bribes all the way to giving them awards and, and anything and everything that you can imagine. The highest that we got between one year and another after a campaign was one and a half percent. 
we did this, we put the GPS, the students have the apps or they can go to the web and see where their bus is and it's kind of funny because you can actually see taking the tours and all those things. But the point is in one year we got 23% increase of bus use. Um, part of why we are doing all these things is because the community, the faculty, the students, everybody lives around the university. So all these principles of walking to your place of work, driving the bicycle, using the bus system, we're actively working in new ways and using technologies when they're available to try to increase its use. And you can see from this list, if you start to add in carbon savings and all those great things from better water management, changing the light bulbs, changing all the systems, going paperless in the syllabi, it tends to accumulate to a huge picture. Um, the challenge for a sustainable approach is also, is it repeatable? Savannah, the symbiosis, the buildings were there, can we do it in other areas? We can. Right now we have four campuses and I'm gonna talk about the one in Lacoste, France. We have 31 repurposed buildings. Um, these ones were actually older than we have, the, the ones that we have in, in Savannah. And you can see an example of how we transformed what was the original market for that community to our library. And actually we used the ovens to make these re really cool notches for students to learn and have a private space to read. Um, SCAT Atlanta, we moved into Atlanta four years ago and we have now five repurposed buildings from 1600 Peach Street. But one of the greatest stories is Ivy Hall, a house that was going to be demolished, an icon of American architecture. A Queen Night Victorian architecture style, the last one remaining before the burning of Atlanta. And it was actually during the boom of development going to be displaced by a development of condos. Um, thank you to a certain votes and some political power, we end up owning the house and we did the investment to restore it to our creative writing center. Now you can see in the background on the picture part of that development that was allowed to be built and now they have a beautiful view of a beautiful piece of architecture and an icon of the history of Atlanta. Um, we also, two years ago, took the formerly WXIA um, TV station. We have a program on TV production and what better place to do it than in an actual TV station. So a building again that was scheduled to be demolished, we took it over and you can see the pictures of the before and after of what we did. Um, SCAT Hong Kong, three weeks ago we offered our first class in SCAT Hong Kong. So can we repeat it not only in the small towns in Europe, but we can repeat it in the cosmopolitan cities of the world. So the government of Hong Kong awarded us the North Kulum um, Magistrate Building, an icon of the history of the British Empire in Hong Kong. Um, this is the building before and after. One of the interesting things about the building is that they make us reserve what it was the equivalent of the Supreme Court. So the professor in that room actually teaches on the bench with a projector behind and all the students are um, where the audience used to be. And they actually force us to preserve one of the jails. So we actually threaten the students, if you behave bad, you know where you're gonna be, end up. Um, so, the point of all of this is that this is a story that continues. Uh, we're constantly updating our buildings, we're constantly working on creating new systems, new technologies, incorporating and creating a culture in which the future is this relationship between education, the community that we are, and the industries that we serve. Um, to finalize, there is a picture of our latest project. Uh, it's part of the train complex, it's the SCAD Museum on the top, that we're expanding and restoring all the train uh, deployment of cotton and slaves um, into a, what will become the, one of the pristine museums of art in the South. Thank you.